This week in 1957, Jet Magazine featured this story in its Mr. and Mrs. section. It stands as a testament to the fact that our parents and grandparents were not as sane as they told us they were. The people involved in this story are not celebrities or politicians or anyone of significant historical importance. They are just plain old everyday civilians like you and me who got involved in some hot mess. Well, maybe they're not exactly like us. I'll share their story and you can decide if they were like you. Let's get into it. But first, if you like these videos about the most scandalous people from yesteryear who make Ty's Hot Mess History channel a time capsule for the culture, subscribe and hit the notification bell so that you can know every time that I upload one of these videos or every time that I live stream. And comment, I subscribed, in the comment section so that I can say hello to you. Now, on to why you are here. Today's story comes from this issue of Jet Magazine dated November 7th, 1957. The article is titled, Beauty Offers to Wed Anyone to Pay Dad's Debts. And it reads, quote, a beautiful and busty girl who boasts measurements of 34, 21, 34, put herself on marital auction block to anyone without regard to color or creed to help clear her father's debts amounting to $6,500. Constance Sandra, daughter of a Senegalese father and English mother, said in Manchester, England, that she will offer herself for sale to pay off the debts and in the process will give up the young student she loves. She said she must find the money within a few weeks and therefore will place no ban on the size, shape, or age of the man who wants to buy her as a wife. I'll marry any man tomorrow who is clear of debt, the beauty said. He can be 60, bald, and bad-tempered. His personality, color, or creed won't matter. End quote. So, her dad was from Africa, her mom was from the UK, and she needed a husband who was from... What a money reside, what a money reside, what a money reside, what a money reside. That's right, where the money reside. You all always want to know if I have some extra info besides these tiny little paragraphs that Jet gives us. Sometimes I don't. This time, I do. So, you're probably wondering, what does this beautiful and busty babe look like? And here you go. Most every newspaper that wrote about her used the same photo. Even Jet Magazine basically rewrote the same story about her two weeks later and used the same photo. Maybe they liked this picture because she really looks like she's looking for a man in it. Where's my future Where's husband? Where's the man? I'm looking. There's gotta be someone somewhere I have out here. my dad's bills. But this Australian newspaper, the Sydney Morning Herald, gave us just a little bit more. They printed a different photo of the girl and told a little more information. Here it is. She received 18 offers. I wish that they would have printed photos of these guys. This newspaper also told us why her father was in debt. So apparently he wasn't falling out of control, spending money like crazy, he had debt from his auto repair business. While a few other publications had printed Constance's measurements, 34, 21, 34, I mean, hey, if a girl is gonna sell herself, she's gotta make it enticing. This paper also told her height, five feet. So if long legs were your thing, you might want to keep your $6,500 or 2,300 pounds in your pockets. And it was also disclosed that Constance was the older of two girls in the family. Even though she told the world that she would take any man that she could get, 18 to 80, blind, crippled, and crazy, luckily for her, most of the men who contacted her were young men around her age. She had a few middle-aged guys who were interested too. The oldest one was 49. Constance's younger sister was named Jazine. She was 16 and she didn't want Constance to go through with this gesture. She knew that Constance was already in love with someone else, a 23-year-old man named Clive Ford, who was a solicitor's clerk, which meant that he was studying law. Not only did Jazine not want Constance to go through with marrying one of these men who wrote to her, 
The love for their father ran so deeply with these two girls that Jazine said that she would take Constance's place and marry one of those men. That way, she could do her part to help save her father from financial ruin and Constance could be with the man she really loved. Constance's beau apparently told her mother in a not so nice tone that she couldn't let her daughter go through with marrying one of those guys. But Mrs. Sandra was completely on board with the idea. I guess that she had a thing against mm, poverty and homelessness, even if it meant pipping out her daughter. And according to the Sandra sisters, one of them was getting married, period. And they had three conditions. One, marriage or nothing. Two, pay my daddy's bills before the wedding. And three, the offer must be made within the week. And their mom was like, yeah, whatever they say, just somebody come and get one of them quickly. It makes you wonder if they were facing eviction or something like that. Mr. Sandra, who sounds as weak as fuck, said that he didn't like the idea at all, but hey, what are you going to do? His actual quote was, It's a terrible thing for any father to allow such a sacrifice, but I can't talk them out of it. Okay, Dad. Somehow, I don't think that he was trying all that hard to talk them out of it. But that's just my feeling. Let me know what you think about it in the comment section. Well. Constance had the last say in this article. Her own words, quote, I'll marry anyone. He can be 60, bald and bad-tempered, I don't care. I can cook, keep house, be gay and cheerful, and I would like to have lots of children. Of course, I would prefer a younger man, but young Englishmen don't have that sort of money. A rich young American or maybe an Australian nation owner's son might consider me a good investment. I'm deeply in love with Clive, but I'm prepared to give him up to save my father." End quote. What a wonderful time in life when a woman had to consider herself a good investment to be worthy of marriage. Anyway, I have only one thing left to say. Poor Clive. Not just because literally he must have been poor. I mean, I hope that he was able to find himself a good girl whose dad paid all of his bills. This is a story that had a good Clive in it. I published a story that had a little something to do with a bad Clive. The story of Phyllis Hyman's fall from entertainment industry grace. You can see that video here. I will also leave a link to it in the description box. My sources for this story are Jet Magazine Archives, 1957 The Sydney Morning Herald Archives, 1957 The Circleville Herald Archives, 1957 Alabama Journal Archives, 1957 and The Times Archives, 1957 are you a content creator, influencer, or blogger who feels like your platform could use an extra boost? Are you thinking about becoming a content creator but you don't know where to start and you want to be sure that you dot all of your I's and cross all of your T's? If so, Layla Lynn can likely show you exactly what you need to get on your way. Her fun new class is called The Business of Blogging with Layla Lynn and in it she is sharing the fundamental principles of blogging in 2022 because let's face it, Social media is a moving target, and what worked well five years ago is likely not what works well today. And with Layla Lynn, you're getting the information from someone who is successful at putting the principles to practice on her own social media platforms, and she literally has the credentials to back it all up, as she holds degrees in social media marketing. Layla Lynn is a multiple six-figure earner whose first social media marketing course helped this channel go from earning $30 a month to earning five figures a month. I'm ready to dig in my heels and learn even more so that I can earn even more. Are you with me? If so, hit my link at the top of the description box and join her class to access this amazing, affordable advice from a woman who knows her business, the business of blogging. If you want text notifications so that you can get a text a few minutes before I release a new video or before I live stream, text me at 
634-0865 to let me know, or you can hit my link that's in the description box. If you have a business, product, service, YouTube channel, or social media account that you would like to promote on my channel, email me at taiwan at taisaidwhattaisaid.com to get rates for advertising on my community tab, my live streams, and or my edited videos, just like this one. Thank you so much for tuning in to the Thai Said What Thai Said channel. Please leave a thumbs up and comment so that we can get a discussion going. And share this video on all of your social media, especially your Facebook. That really helps me out a lot. And subscribe and hit the notification bell so that you can know when my next video is ready for you. And if you don't like what I'm saying, but you love it, feel free to hit that thanks button just below your video screen there and send me some donations, donations, donations. Yeah, baby. See you on the next video.